Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you the relationship between the current and the voltage in a capacitor that has a time varying voltage supply across a capacitor. So what we're going to look at is what is the voltage across the capacitor, what is the current in the circuit, and how do they relate to one another. Well, we remember that when we charge up a capacitor to full charge, we can see that the capacitance by definition is equal to the total charge divided by the voltage across it. But what does it look like? What does that equation look like when we have a time varying voltage source and the current and the voltage are constantly changing? Then we can say that the capacitance at any moment in time, the instantaneous capacitance, or I should say the capacitance is equal to the ratio of the charge on the capacitor at any moment in time divided by the voltage across that capacitor. All right, if we now solve that equation for Q, what do we get? Now notice that Q is a function of time and V is a function of time. Q now becomes equal to C, which is the capacitance, times the voltage. In this case, Q is a variable, voltage is a variable, and C, the capacitance, is a constant. If I now take the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to time, we get the following thing. We get dQ dt, is equal to the capacitance times dV dt. Now dQ dt is actually definition of the current. We know that by definition the current, the instantaneous current, is always equal to the change in the charge per unit time. In other words, we can then change dQ dt by the current and we say the current as a function of time is equal to the capacitance times dV dt. Now that's the equation that relates the current in the circuit to the voltage. See that the current is equal to a function of the capacitance times the change in the voltage per unit time. If the voltage is changing quickly per unit time, then the current is high. If the voltage is changing slowly per unit time, then the current is low. Notice that this equation has actually the similarity to something you're familiar with, the y equals mx plus b equation. Now in this case, if we let b go to zero, this is equal to a linear equation where y is the vertical axis and x is the horizontal axis and m is the slope. If we equate this equation to this, you can see that in, instead of y we have i, instead of x we have dv dt, and instead of the slope we have c. Well, c is now going to be the slope of our new equation. If we make a graph of this, notice the vertical axis becomes the current, the horizontal axis becomes the change in the voltage with respect to time. And then if we draw the function here, which relates the current to the voltage, it looks like a straight line, like this, where the slope is equal to the ratio of the current divided by the change in the voltage with respect to time, which is equal to the capacitance. Now notice, if the capacitance is large, then the slope will be much deeper then you can see that a change in the vo voltage with respect to time will result in a much greater current, and if the capacitance is small, then a change in the voltage with respect to time will result in a smaller current. So here in this case, the capacitance simply determines how the relationship will fall between the current and the change in the voltage over time. And that's what we mean by the relationship in a capacitor circuit between the current and the voltage. That's how it's done.